Thanks, Prateek, for uh, joining this interview and sparing your time to speak on this topic. The vital topic now it has become the proposed yeah. uh, broadcast bill, twenty twenty four. Now there is a lot of chatter in the public domain about what this bill is going to uh, contain, what kind of uh, regulations they are going to push through. There is a lot of apprehension. that this might be yet another tool to create a supercharged censorship kind of a weapon so what is your what have what is your take on this entire thing yeah no and i think the the concerns are are fairly justified right and the uh, the, the the first thing to i think to consider is that the latest version of the bill uh that has you know supposedly been given to select stakeholders is not in the public domain so we actually don't know the current version what what the changes are from the previous version what uh the government is actually envisioning at least you know full specifics now there's been there's been some reporting that's been helpful um but for a lot of us we haven't actually seen the uh the updated version and uh, and you know how it's changed from from the from the previous one uh but the the broader concerns remain in the sense that uh, look you know at, at the face of it what what the goal of the bill is trying to do is it's trying to bring all sorts of you know what what it envisions as broadcasting under a single bill right so you're taking your traditional uh, satellite broadcasting and you're trying to combine it with uh, you know with internet as well and then even further you're you're trying to combine or you're trying to bring in you know your curated uh, content platform such as your netflix amazon prime etc along with news broadcasters etc all under uh, all under one bill right which is which is by any stretch and an an ambitious task but the way they've gone about doing it also is uh, is problematic in the sense that uh they're trying to you know take old structures of regulation the three tiered architecture and in, enforce it uh on you know on people on the internet uh thereby creating a lot of additional uh obligations and again and you know rules and potential for penalties uh for people and this is this is particularly important in the indian context because as we've seen uh, a lot of independent uh, journalism a lot of independent commentary has now moved to the internet right because the traditional sources uh in, in a sense are not are not willing are not willing to criticize uh the government and the official line uh, as much so so a lot of voices have now moved uh, to youtube have moved to the internet or you know do commentary uh, online right and now you are imposing you know in 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 a way it's looking it's almost like death by a thousand cuts right because yeah, you're enforcing uh, yeah uh, so th- this is a very interesting point that you make because if we uh, there is no uh, beating around the bush over here and no no mincing of words to say it up front that the mainstream media has has been quite captured by the establishment and the executive and uh, this election what we saw that the independent news content creators played a very vital role in giving an alternative narrative to the people of this country now uh, do you suspect that this was the trigger to withdraw the old draft and then go into uh, go for a new draft and then apparently this draft has been selectively shared with stakeholders we have come to know that this the draft that has been shared with the stakeholders is uh, watermarked individually in the name of the stakeholder and apparently it also they have been also made to sign a non disclosure ag- agreement now this is something which is absolutely bizarre because law making yeah. process why the law making process is is uh, is couched in so much of secrecy correct no no so i, I think the, the the secrecy part is extremely concerning right uh, in in terms of uh, what should be an open process in the public domain uh, right we should also be able to see what are the responses that people had put in in the last version of the bill that should be out in the public domain you should have ideally been able to provide counter comments to that and then there should have been justification from the government in terms of okay these are the changes we are making and this is why we are making right but it's not for, forget anyway being close to that as you pointed out it's going it's it is it's a very secretive uh, process where uh, you know they've gone to uh, unimaginable lengths to even ensure that 
you know no one no one can no one can share it uh, right and there is there is fear around around sharing it uh, to to your to your earlier question about the role of the election and the trigger i think th- there is but now while that could have played some part in it again it's important to to note that this bill actually came out for consultation in november 2023 right uh, and m- many of the provisions are are sort of a continuation of that so and and i think there's been there's been recognition or or a desire to to control the internet control speech on the internet even before even before the election right now now of course with the way the numbers turned out and and this belief that uh, you know which to my mind still needs to be empirically tested but this belief that the alternate narrative that uh that you know that a lot of independent commentators and journalists on the internet were able were able to provide play, play, played a role right now it's still an unanswered question of how many votes they actually shifted but but i think in terms of at least being able to create an alternative conversation and an alternate narrative they did play they did play an important uh, role in that right now to to what extent that's in the government thinking is i you know is is something the government knows but you know there there does seem to be renewed interest uh, in 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 pushing this pushing this bill now uh post you know the the formation of 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 the of the government right but uh, some of the criteria in terms of uh, look the the you know the the intention to regulate uh, anyone who's engaging in uh, news and current affairs commentary on the internet that's been there in the older draft as well right and it was a concern back even even back then that look there was a lot of ambiguity around uh some of the some of the ways that it had been structured the fact that look if as long as you're doing what they called professional or systemic uh you know sy- systematic activity uh you you are considered uh you know you 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 could you could come under the purview of the bill there was some ambiguity i think they now tried to expand what they mean uh by professional and systematic but it's still it, they are still broad enough and this is what is reported right that they've they've now tried to include definitions for what is systematic what is professional what can be considered news and again those are so broad uh, that it potentially has the potential to cover anyone right and then you have to square that with the obligations and potential for fines and prosecution on people uh, right and then th- th- there will be a question of look to what extent will they will they enforce it and i think that's a trap we should avoid falling into because as long as this bill is out there and as long as it gets passed uh, in in this form there is an ability to use it in whatever way you want right so it it needs to be uh, it needs to be opposed in such a way that uh, these provisions actually don't take don't, don't take effect exactly and this is uh, if we see what you are saying is a very important aspect i mean highlighting a very important aspect that the the definitions definition uh, definitions are getting wider by the day and which gives a lot of uh, room to use those definitions any which way a person would like yeah. to use it for example if we go back uh, i mean i mean if, if i am not uh, I, i if i am right correct um, and tell me if i am wrong there anywhere that sometime in february 2021 the under the it rules of 2021 there was an attempt to break encryption into of uh, of whatsapp and signal there was a, a mandate to do that then around the same time the ministry of information and uh, broadcasting was given extra powers to block any digital news content then we move on to say um, it rules of the 20 of 2023 there was the amendment that uh, in january they created a grievance committee of uh, uh, which was called the uh, uh a, a grievance appellate committee if i am uh, not wrong and uh, headed by officials of multiple ministries like ministry of home ministry of information and broadcasting and ministry of uh, information uh, technology and they all were given the power to remove any content that the government felt it was against them now we are talking about we are going with this broadcast bill what we are apprehending i mean we don't know the exact details apprehending that this uh, uh, the, the powers to block anything or take down any content is going to be even supercharged even more now so, so yes the so greater pattern of this urge to uh, to expand the footprint of censorship in every possible direction 
No, yeah. So I, I think, the, the, so I, I'll go back to the, the IT rule 2021, which is again a very, very interesting, even the moment in time it happened was very interesting, February 2021, which was just as the, you know, the, the farmers protests were, were going on against the three, the three farm bills. And it came also in the background of uh, Twitter at that time, very famously reversing course on some takedown orders that the government had uh, had issued right and this was all early early 2021 and then you know late february 2021 is when the uh, the it rule 2021 were were notified with with many problematic provisions right one of course uh, as you pointed out being uh, the fact that uh, there were the traceability requirements uh, traceability provisions that had that had an impact on end to end uh, encryption uh, there was this joint administering of the rules between uh, the Ministry of Electronics Information Technology and the Ministry of Information Broadcasting, which, as you pointed out, the Ministry of Information Broadcasting also then got the powers to issue essentially take down orders, even emergency uh, provisions, which which is incidentally the one it used uh, in the in the BBC documentary in in February 2022. There have been other cases as well, other cases where they've actually in some cases put out press releases when they when they've. Uh, uh, you know, when they've actually utilized that. The other thing that the ID rule 2021 brought in was uh, what what a lot of countries, uh, what a lot of researchers call the hostage taking clauses, right? Which is that uh, if you're an intermediary, you need to have a grievance officer in, in the country. And if you're above a certain size, then you also need to have a compliance officer uh, in the country. And these individuals are also liable in case of uh, you know, in case you're not complying with the the government order. So what that also does is change very significantly the calculation for uh, for for these intermediaries. For yeah, and again, it's social media platform, but it, actually, it's anyone, right? It's a hosting provider. Wh whoever is providing a service on the internet is, an, is essentially an intermediary, and it creates a very big you know co complication for them in the sense that now. Uh, they also have to look at the fact that potentially their employees can be individually prosecuted and and targeted, right? That was that was in the 2021 version. There was an amendment in 2022 which which introduced one the grievance appellate uh, committees, uh, and th there were two two problematic parts in this. One was the grievance appellate uh, committee, which, as you said, there are there are currently three committees, uh, you know, chaired by different secretaries from uh, different different ministries in in the government and. The, the way it works is that you know if if someone has a has a grievance with the decision that uh, the grievance officer of a company has taken they can then appeal to this committee and then the action this committee takes is binding on the social media platform right so the GAC which is the grievance appellate committee or what and we call publisher government of digital content right and publishers of digital content they have to take down the content that that is it's also applicable to them also yeah. So if it's applicable to to the intermediary, right? Right. And so they will then they will then take uh, they will they will then take action. The one that's on the publishers uh, is, is 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 a little different, I think. Uh, now, but it essentially creates you know you're you're essentially able to make a complaint and then this this committee takes order. And the other thing that's also worth noting about this committee is that its orders are all uh, they, they're all they're all secret, right? They're, they're all yeah, behind the I mean, uh, I mean uh, there's the a website confidential. That they nobody, have. Can, nobody can nobody can that order public. Correct. Yes, so they, they, I think they've they've taken up to the, they, they, there is a website gsc.gov.in which which very nicely lists the number of orders that they've taken, but that's all the information you get. Uh, so I think as of as of recently, it's somewhere little above a thousand cases where they've actually issued orders, uh, but we don't actually know what those orders are. We don't know what kind of content uh, has been targeted, has been has you know has been actioned uh, in uh, in in that way. The other very problematic thing that this that these October twenty two amendments did. Uh, was it also changed in in many ways the 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 conditions for due diligence that an intermediary has to uh, you know ha has to undertake right now until then the the obligation on the intermediary was that they have to inform their users not to host upload transmit and there are seven words like that uh, so 10 10 or 11 types of content uh, what this amendment also did is it made the change to say that in addition to informing you also have to make reasonable efforts not to cause users to do this right now reasonable efforts is undefined what it means is, is unclear but it almost essentially put a proactive obligation on the intermediary to say these types of content should 
should not be should not be on the platform and we've actually seen the previous minister of state use this to say hey you should not have this type of uh, information on you you should not have this this type of content right so they they actually flipped in many ways the the burden right on uh, on, on intermediaries and unfortunately at that time the intermediaries didn't push back uh, on this right. you know, very problematic uh, problematic amendment then we go to january 2023 which is which is where the the fact checking unit uh, um, you know, um, amendments were, were first initially put out for public consultation. There's, again, there's a whole problematic way in which the consultation happened. It was slipped in on the last day of uh, consultation about gaming intermediaries. Suddenly on deadline day, they introduced this one thing about the fact checking unit and initially gave people only a week or 10 days to respond. Of course, there was pushback and then they extended it uh, by another month. And then in April is when they actually notified uh, that uh, you know th th those amendments, right? So it basically and, and says this that is, this, if it's to do with any... amendment is now in the challenge in the Bombay High Court uh, by Kunal Kamra. Correct. Uh, correct. And it is the matter of subjudice. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Correct. 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 Exactly. Right. So 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 th those those hearings are are, are going on, uh, uh, and uh, and it basically says that if it's to do with the business of the government again, business of the union government not defined. Uh, right and uh, if, and if it's flagged as fake, false, or misleading, then intermediaries are obliged to take action uh, against it. Right. So again, you're you're you know, you're using that proactive obligation that you created in the October 22 amendment, and to say that now if any fact checking unit that is notified by the government and the I think the government eventually notified the fact check unit of the Press Information Bureau, which again has been pointed out as, you know, as having acted in, in, in a partisan manner, which th that notification is currently, uh, has been stayed pending the outcome of this, of this case, but it's very likely that that is the unit that's going to ultimately uh, take, uh, you know, take up this mantle. And so if, as, as, and essentially saying that if, if they flag something as fake, false or misleading, uh, then there is an obligation on platforms or, in, and, and again, it's actually broader than that, right? We, we normally think of social media platforms when, when we say this, but it actually applies to everyone on the internet, right? So it's your social media platform, it's the, perp it's the business that's hosting your website, it's the business that's resolving your DNS queries. All of them technically have an obligation to act in some form. So it's, uh, it's, right? it's now, they out basically, it is just uh, uh, these uh, amendments in the IT rules now going up to... Uh, now extending going into the broadcast bill and all that so they are kind of overlapping each other there are a lot of aspects which are overlapping and basically it's I mean, now from uh, uh from a kind of censorship it has now gone into a nuclear level of censorship that is what we are seeing so yeah so i i think the the other aspect that, we, that we've not covered is the fact that you know parts of the IT rules to do with news publishers was, have, have also been stayed, right? In terms of the intimation and the notification, those have been stayed by various high courts and, you know, the rest of that case is, and then it's been transferred and, you know, the rest of that case is, is also ongoing, right? Uh, and now what you're doing is you're passing a new law that does some of the same things. Right? Exactly. Uh, it goes beyond, but it does some of the same things in terms of requiring intimation registration and bringing them under a three-tier mechanism. Uh, you know, and again, at the top layer of the of the three-tier mechanism, you have government officers uh, in you know all, also in, involved, right? Who can then prescribe action to be taken against uh, uh, you know against against publishers, against broadcasters, and pretty much anyone that comes under uh, under the under the bill, which as we've seen with the current definition can include, can include everyone, right? Not just yeah, what, yeah. what we so, think of as broadcasters, but even, you know, potentially anyone who's saying things on the internet. Yeah. So uh, Pratik, what we are seeing over here that the knife of censorship is getting sharper with every new uh, law that is being made and, and the, the common thread in the entire process is is that they are all done in a under a very strong shroud of secrecy and where the public being taken into account or the wider ecosystem or stakeholders being taken into account is kind of being reduced to some sort of a formality it, it seems no, and and you're right, and, and and a lot of that has been has been a pattern, right? The lack of the lack of transparency 
through most consultations has been has been a pattern in the sense that even if they do a consult even if they you know even if they put it out you do, you don't actually know what the responses are right you don't know what what people have actually said the government doesn't actually come out with with a position or at least even a summary saying hey this is what uh, these are the type of consultations we we've, uh, we've received and which is why we are making these changes right so what happens is i, I remember in draft some, version uh, in some bill this uh, similar process was carried out and i can't remember was uh, was it the minister of information technology in the previous government who said that these public uh, making public these public comments that were invited on a particular bill are is not in public interest means nothing can be more comical than that yeah no it's so yeah so I, i don't remember who specifically said that but that, that's generally that that seems to be the, the thinking so for example even with the telecommunication bill uh when the when the consultation happened uh they actually came out and said look we we're, we're not we're not putting the comments out so that people can uh can submit their views freely right and i think that that's a very problematic uh take for anyone to have because you know look in in a democracy it's very important for me as a citizen to know what a stakeholder is saying about uh, about a bill that affects me right now uh now whether, whether they are a corporate entity or not is 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 essentially irrelevant Uh, for the sake of that conversation uh, because but it's important for for me to know who is representing uh, my interests and who's against my interests and broadly for the law making process also it, it, it's extremely important to know who has said what right and how the bill is being shaped because it you also then you're also able to then determine uh, changes that are being made to the bill are based on which inputs and based on whose inputs right and uh, and without with you know with with complete lack of transparency on this it's unclear you're, you're unable to determine uh you know why changes are being made what's driving them right and, and so there's uh, there's none of that there's an absence of transparency and accountability in the uh, in the process what they like to do is quote how many responses they've got and claim that it's been an open exactly uh, exactly extensive consultation so for example i think with the data protection bill they said they got over 20000 responses uh but we don't really know what meaningfully what 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 many of them said we don't know what different ministries are saying Uh, right we don't know none of that is actually is, is actually put out in the public domain and it's very important uh, i think for us as citizens to know what different stakeholders whether government or private uh, are saying you know about about laws that 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 affect uh, all of us right the other common theme is the uh, just the accumulation of executive discretion that you're seeing all through right yeah. uh, whether it's institutional design everywhere it, you know whether it's appointment uh the, just the fact that a lot of the details are being left to delegated legislation and rule making right under the guise that look we need to respond and we need to be nimble so we need to do this in rules which i think is uh, you know is is a, is a very uh, a clever way of spinning it right but extremely problematic because you're doing it you're writing the laws in such a way that there are no safeguards there are no limitations that is what the problem can. that is the problem and in fact right? coming back that is exactly the problem uh, coming back to the broadcast bill whatever little detail has details have come out according to that that the power will be with bureaucrats to classify any individual who is producing any kind of a commentary or any kind of a news related program as a digital news broadcaster yes. and anybody who is producing some kind of a other kind of content as ott content creator ott uh, uh, ott broadcaster now you are yeah. i mean there there are the kind of uh, uh re- rules and regulations and the kind of resources to be uh, to be classified as a broadcaster that is required vis-a-vis an individual is are, are widely uh, widely different i mean a right. uh, no. individual can never become a a a broadcaster in that sense where the it is backed by a corporate media so you are basically uh, kind of creating a very high uh wall for this individual uh, content producers correct and this is why i was saying it, it's it's death by a thousand cuts in many ways right and and both of these are problematic right so for example with the and i think uh, both uh, both aditya agarwal at the hindustan times and nikhil pawa media nama they both i think put out uh, good resources on what some of the changes are right and and for that some of them seem to be that look for, for news broadcaster there isn't there isn't isn't even a threshold uh, of of how many users that you that 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 need to be there right so potentially anyone as long as they they think that you are doing 
it for a systematic professional in a systematic professional manner which is again to me very very broad uh, right you could come under you could come under that now it seems for the content creators who are not doing news current affairs etc again i think that line is going to be very fuzzy to actually determine right like if if you're giving people financial advice and you're talking about the budget uh you are automatically talking about the news right so, so it I, i i don't understand how they actually make that distinction but but setting that aside for a second in that case it seems like there'll be a threshold but as soon after that threshold you're supposed to have uh, you know a, a content evaluation committee you're supposed to you're supposed to do uh, you have all these sort of obligations on you and then there are penalties and i think this this is this is the important part right for for not following for example for 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 not for violating the program code and the advertising code uh that there, there are penalties on you if you don't have a grievance officer there is a penalty on you if you're not signed up with a self regulatory organization there is a penalty on you right so you you're creating so much obligation on essentially individuals uh most of whom will 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 say look i don't want to do this it's not worth the risk right or you'll be operating under this you know this uncertainty where whenever they want they can come after you right uh, yeah. so then so then you are essentially self censoring yourself you are not engaging in matters that may be that may be critical of government or government policy uh, in in any way and all of this has very very severe repercussions uh, you know for the freedom of speech for yeah. uh, for rich healthy public discourse in the country and that, that uh, uh, and if you recall as in may uh, on may 28 when the uh, uh, elections were in progress there was a big uh, consultative meeting that was organized by the press club of india and you were part of it where we one of the, and we passed uh, where they passed a resolution where exactly this point was uh, raised in that resolution that the consultative process needs to be open transparent and yeah. very wide and and what we are seeing the way the broadcast bill is shaping up is exactly the opposite of what the the stakeholders in this news digital news arena and general news uh, creators uh, expected from the government so no, absolutely this this secretive process is is extremely concerning now they may still at some point choose to make, you know to do to do another round of public consultation right we we don't know that they they may still do that but i will still say even at that even at that point uh the the provisions are already so problematic and and even at that point we should not forget that it's gone through this secretive round uh and there is there is never going to be any transparency from them in terms of why changes have been made who are those you know who are those select stakeholders who were invited what their views were we'll never know any of that right uh, and i think even if there's another round of public consultation uh there needs to be extremely strong pushback against the bill because of its uh, very very problematic implications Okay thanks Pratik for uh, sharing your valuable inputs and insights they were wonderful talking to you and i'm sure with this um, is going to be a topic that's going to be discussed even more in the coming days and i think uh, we will we need to talk about it uh, about these things a lot more in the coming days and thanks for yeah, your time uh, Pratik thanks so much